What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Study Hall here on UFS University. My name's Tam, and I'm joined by... Tyler. Travis TNT Tangeman. Jacob Johnson. What Study Hall is for the unenrolled is we take a bunch of your guys' UFS topics as well as some of our own, and we sit down and we discuss them for your amusement, entertainment, and knowledge. So with that said, a um, couple housekeeping things. If you like the content and want to support the show, go out to patreon.com slash UFS University. We also have a TCG player up. That's another way you can support us as well as get shit so um topic two uh, i want to jump into because i think it might run a little long and i want to talk about uh the mentality of the game um and and i don't mean like um I how to that, i read that as mortality yeah the mortality <laughs> mortality like, of the wow. game dead wow <laughs> game dead um i want to talk Rick's about the game mentality of uh you as a player so um At time of recording, yesterday, randomly, I was talking to Ryan Pham, um, and we're both uh, big Super Smash Brothers fans, and we were we watched this show called The Reeds, hosted by Scar and Toph, Toph and Scar, and uh, one of the people they had on there is named Ginger, and he's a big mental player. Um, it's it's all about um, how he's how he's feeling is, is, is are his thoughts clean. And all of this, he's telling stories of like how he's getting four stocked by the best team in the world, and um, it all had to do with where they were sitting. They were sitting the two best people were here, and then his his teammates were were here. Um, they already split them as opposed to being by side by side. Um, and so, like, just making that little switch and changing their mentality from like a neutral to a positive thing fixed their game, and to the point where they were taking games off of the two best players to ever touch the controller. And so I started watching a lot of like motivational speakers and my old martial arts instructor showed me this like 12 minute speech by uh, by Arnold Schwarzenegger that was like just like really eye opening and really cool. And it brought me back to um, this this instance with myself that happened on stream this past Sunday where I scooped three out of the four games that we played. And the only game that I didn't scoop was when I killed you. Yep. And that's really lame. That's really lame. My mentality was poor. And so what I want to talk about is what are things that you do mentally to keep yourself in a healthy mindset when you play the game? Winning, losing, testing, playing in, in Swiss rounds that don't matter or tops that are very important. What do, what do you do to keep, to to quote the the great Troy Bolton, keep your head in the game? <laughs> Um, Thank you for laughing at my amazing high, co- high school musical joke. I thought it was good. Uh, keeping a good head state is something I've learned over playing for so long. Um, it When I was younger, obviously, when you're younger, it's really hard to not get frazzled or mad when you lose because you really want to win, stuff like that. When you become more ma- like mature more and stuff like that, uh, it, it's more of like you want to win the prizes in compared to, uh, just win the game. It, like that's kind of like how it changes. So there's more of a stat stake stuff like that. Mm-hmm. What I do, I don't. So when I play card games, I don't, I don't put the prizes as the first priority. I play each game separately, and I don't care about what's happening in the end. That's the way I stay level-headed most of the time. Yeah. Each game, I just play separately. I don't even care about two out of three. That doesn't phase me at all. Each game is its own separate thing. Um, I'm going to write Usually. down a, a note real fast just to come back to a... I don't want to lose this thing. But, Tyler, do you have anything to add? Well, like, what do you do? So, all I can think about is that when I get frustrated with a game, mm-hmm. I have to, I have to step away. And this is with any game? Or this is UFS? This is, I think this is pretty UFS centric. <clears throat> Mainly because, like, I don't know. So, like, here's the thing is that I, I have to step away. What that meant last time was I don't play the game for three months. But that's, okay. not, that's not a good way to play the game. <laughs> uh, sometimes, let's see. I don't know, that's when I'm really frustrated, I guess. Otherwise, I'm just I just get over it very quickly, and just move on. 
So like that's not that's not really anything. That's just oh well, I've lo- I've lost this game. I I figure out what I did wrong. It's like okay, I did X wrong. I did X wrong. Well, all right, and then I just move on, and then hopefully I don't do that again. So when it comes to that though, like you didn't. You didn't really. St- you didn't say anything just now. Yes, I know. What? How do you put yourself in a positive mindset? What do you do? Like I know James listens to music. I know James listens to music before he goes to a big event. Um, he always puts the headphones in and he put, he puts himself in the zone. The same way. I didn't say the, I did either. the same way that like well you had you had a different point. Yeah. yeah. The the same way that like like a professional boxer would do, and your mentality is very reactionary. Of I've lost. And even using the word "I've lost" is like not good when it when you're going into the match. I'm not. You, we would rather say, "I'm gonna win this" as opposed to "I'm not gonna lose this," right? Right. Like even the, using the L word, love, even using the the L word, um, is Already like a m- bad mindset. Right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, yeah. That that's a negative. That's a cloud that could could, could go into your your mind, right? Yeah, because if you think you're gonna lose, you're obviously gonna make misplays. Like, like you're not gonna notice as much stuff because you you're thinking about things that aren't happening. That, that that's the way. I, that's what I was trying to describe as well. Like, if you're thinking of the future, you're only halfway thinking about what's happening now. So you, it's an easier way of just losing, and then you don't get what's happening later at all. Yeah, you don't even get there. So, the way I play is. I play after a quote from my favorite magic streamer slash professional uh, LSV. Shoutouts. Yeah. Um, He says, one of my favorite quotes that he's ever said is, always play to your outs. Whenever I'm playing a game, I play to my statistics and I play to my outs. If something... What does that mean? So, playing to your outs is if you're in not like the best of states you play like nebraska yeah exactly currently (laughs) um you just you play to get your head above water so you play for what towards whatever is happening or could happen to keep your head above water so you don't lose the game outright because if you don't play to your outs then you can be playing to lose yeah, like reviewing an out of your league against a Jetta player. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I uh when it when it comes to mentality, and this is something I'm gonna be trying to do, I'm very much gonna be trying to keep my head on my shoulders. I am a very passionate player. Um lose by an inch or lose by a mile, I, f- I feel every atom that I lost by. Um, and and the, the inch, the mile, they, they feel the same to me. When I was testing versus you, I was getting so frustrated that the game that I won, I squeaked. I stole that game because I drew seven attacks. And the games that I lost... And I failed to check, yeah. The game, yeah, the game. I stole that game. I had no. I I lost four out of four games, statistically. I mean, yeah. in the same breath of air, though, that was you playing to your outs. Like at the same time, playing to your outs doesn't have to be statistical. Playing to your outs can just be well. If I draw seven attacks or whatever, I kill him, and that's the only way I probably kill him. Well, I have to play to that out because if I don't, then I'm losing this game. But. What I'm saying is, is the deck that I played was not fun to play. The deck that I played yeah. was not optimal at all. I understand. I that. suck. I suck at version ones. And not only did I suck at version ones, I made a de- bad deck for arguably a bad character. Um, I I did not nothing. A nothing about that was going well for me. Every stat that I could possibly have on a scale of one to ten, I capped out at like a three, which is hilarious because it was for damage. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> I, I it was, I was just getting my head beat in and as opposed to sit down and just take that punishment and let you finish a kill turn i would just scoop it up as order in order to save my mental state right Mm -hmm. but as you said that's really shitty testing it's just bad testing for you it's not being a good teammate so what i'm trying to do whenever i go into games now is i very much am going to stop trying to play against the player and i'm just going to start trying to play against the deck 
So I was listening to a uh, Street Fighter, uh, like a 12 minute thing on like your your potential. What is your potential? Um, and this is a little different when it comes to fighting games versus card games because we have the biggest luck issue, which is luck of the draw. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas Street Fighter, if you're playing Ken and I'm playing Ken, and we both press the A button, it's the same A button. But in a card game, if I draw all orange and you draw all gray, I get to attack and you don't. <laughs> um, and so what I'm going to be trying to do is when I went to the Atlanta PTC and I stayed up way too late chatting with people, everything that I said in order for me, instead of me going to bed was, it's fine, I'm just going to lose tomorrow. I'm fighting, I'm fighting Lilith. It's pretty much an auto win versus Jackie and either I'll win or I'll lose. And that's such a shitty mentality to have. I should have gone in that match going, no, I'm going to win. I figured out what to do. I know what I need to do. And and it's going to happen. Just being not not falsely confident, not overly confident, but just being confident and using using that W word. I will win. I will per, uh, per, uh, persevere. I will have this indomitable spirit, and I'll never give up. Just saying that to yourself, Channel honestly. Your inner Vegeta. Yeah, at one hundred percent. I I am the best at this game, and I am gonna go win win Turbo Worlds, and I'll get that car. Mm-hmm. And I've been playing for two weeks. I'm going to go do it. Mm-hmm. One of the people that I think has uh, one of the best uh, winner mindset mentalities is actually one of our local players, um, Mark Tyner. Um, I think Mark Tyner, ever since he put his hands on these cards, have has had this, man, I'm just going to beat you. And it's a really, really good competitive mentality to have. Makes yeah. him a little bit of a heel, but like, he beats your ass sometimes. Like, he really does. And yeah. there's nothing you can do about it. Very true. I do play with him a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, after playing with him a bunch as well, I also noticed that he plays very similarly to me in that you he always plays to his outs. So if his out is drawing this card and this is an orange card, he's going to play to his out and he's going to probably kill you. And he's going to be confident that he can do it, which is a very good thing. Yeah, he just goes for that check. Yeah. Yeah. Confident. I mean, either he makes it or doesn't, right? Yeah. That's... Playing to your outs. I want to play not over yet so badly. <laughs> it's not legal in turbo. It's not legal. Yeah. And not on symbol. And uh, I would off symbol it. Really? Uh, yeah. Getaway fire leaves anyways. That's fair. Yeah. Oh, to spoil. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um. <laughs> anything to add, Ty? No. Is there, uh, I. So now I'm demanding you to add something. Well, I have nothing. So like, what's your mental state? I don't know. It's like right now. Here's the thing. What's even it, even state? if it's even if it's something that you you're like that's really eye opening. And the thing that I I caught about that was this. I'd be fine with that. I did think that I should probably stop saying that I'm really bad at this game. I agree. And I'm gonna lose, even though that is what I think. And this kind of <laughs> this maybe reinforced that a little bit because I have no idea. What, I've never done any of the things any of you are talking about. But the good news. I've always the point of the podcast. Sure, I've always though. It's like this is why I don't think I have like a mentality about it because I always I sort of started as a positive mentality. You right? started positive. Yeah, it's just I'm I'm not a generally negative person. Mm-hmm. Although I I it's, although I feel like it sometimes that I come off as negative. Mm-hmm. I also know that I don't, but I am also an anxious person, and that's why I vocalize it as very negative. But I always go in very positive to a lot of things. Including UFS or not? Including UFS, yeah. Yeah. Like I when I start a game, I don't start thinking I'm gonna lose. After a while after I finish a game, I think about the fact that I'm gonna lose. Or when I think about upcoming games, I'll think, Wow, I'm I'm gonna have a hard, I'm gonna have a tough time then, but then going into it, I don't slap my character down and be like, Well, let's just get this over with. It's well. Let's win this game. Okay. Okay. And that's that in and of itself is like a good mentality to have. Even even like I went into my rounds match versus Tim Keith playing this crazy. Eventually, go and win the tournament Lilith deck. And I went in with a on a scale of one to ten, like a four out of ten. I, my needle was definitely pointed more towards the negative side of like, fuck, this is going to be a hard match. As opposed to, mm, I think I'm just going to beat his ass. I have the outs in my deck. If I didn't, I would not have taken a game in tops. I should have just like I've played against Lilith 
like the second most out of anybody and the other deck I fight against is freaking Siegfried. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I know I know how to deal with big damage attacks. I know how to deal with uh, her response. I just have to wait and hold a hand. And then it just didn't happen. And in, and I in game two, I just played really, really brash because of my my mentality. And I went, well, well now I just have to kill him. It's, I'm just going to rush him down and like not play smart. I'm just going to do whatever. And I checked a three when I statistically knew I was going to check a three. And I tapped everything out. And then he turned around and killed me. Like because of my mental state and because of how I went into a game that I had a negative. I, I had a, a an 8-2 or a 2-8, 2-8. I lost that game before it even started because of because of the two eight and how hard that matchup was, and I went ahead and put myself in a bad spot. It ended up just being zero ten. Yeah, yeah, that happened. Um, also, as far as mentality goes, uh, I forget who it was, but there was a fighting game player that I really like to watch, and he t- uh, teaches people about tactical tilting, which is basically you have to know when to not tilt and you have to know when to tilt your opponent because obviously when people are tilted, they play worse. They're statistically more likely to lose games, which is obviously not the case all the time because some people play better when they're tilted. Some people play you worse. Look out. It's just, it depends. <laughs> uh, but you have to, you have to know when is when you're getting BM'd and you have to be able to block that out and you have to know when to BM tactically. Well, okay, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. I honestly think that everyone can play card games without trying to tilt your opponent, and you can still do amazingly well. Mm-hmm. I personally do not ever try and purposely tilt my opponent in an actual tournament. If I'm playing casuals, yes, I'm going to because it's fun. Right. But that's usually with friends, and you obviously know that it's not mean. Um, if you're playing against a random person that you don't know, you should not be, you should not do that. Well, I, well, so like, I know it's a tactical thing and stuff, but I, don't, I, I that's think that's just my morals. That here's the middle ground. That, here's but. the middle ground. <laughs> I think you're both right. I think you're both right. I think, I think if you are okay with the, 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 backlash Mm -hmm. socially of what will come with you tilting your opponent Mm -hmm. then it's a tool use it yeah if you are not comfortable with the backlash of you being the heel and using that tool then don't use it i'm not a i'm not a fan of of doing it either it doesn't it doesn't make me feel very good but i sat and i watched uh mason johnson um talk trash on miles tyler during a ptc in finals it was kim versus uh terry and to the point where the Kim deck was like laying six cards down on the field on turn two and was like cross his arms and was like fucking kill me, Miles. Oh, you didn't oh you didn't get there? I'm sure I will. Like like and Miles got mad and he lost a game. And then it happened again and Miles turned around and turned two to him. And Miles, as angry as he I've like almost ever seen him, was just like, Are you gonna shut your fucking mouth now and play the game? And then come on, game three. But like, <laughs> but, but like, uh, My- but he didn't win the tournament. Miles was tilted off the off the face of the planet, and it and it showed. And I don't I don't know if that affected his game at all. But like, it was a it was a tool that you can use. So mm-hmm. I, I I don't want to tell anybody on the podcast you can't do that. But I do want to educate you that it is possible that there will be social ramifications if you do. Exactly. Just you have to know when when not to. What are the possible negatives to it, and what are the positives? Be tactical about it. Don't just randomly BM someone just because you can. Yeah. Because that's how you lose games, because then you're up against that one random person who plays better when they're tilted, and you get destroyed. <laughs> and people's feelings get hurt. Exactly. What, uh, any last minute thoughts? I think we've covered this topic fairly well. If I, there was any, any advice, look at the camera and give one piece of advice on, on keeping a good mental state um so when my, my one piece of advice would be if you are having a good time with the person sitting across from you like talking wise and like getting to know them and stuff like that if you've never met them it cannot go poorly because you still met someone you got a new friend 
you played cards with someone. That that that's what I do almost every time. I I try and get to know the person. I don't know. That that's my one piece of advice. Tyler, uh, be positive. Because I have no other advice for this. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Travis? Um, just be in the, to put it bluntly, be untiltable, which I know is nearly impossible for a lot of people, but. Such just a be as close as you can to being untiltable because tilt ruins games. Do you want to explain to some people what tilt means? Because you are using a sl- slang term. Sure. So tilt meaning don't get angry or frustrated when things aren't going your way during a game. So I, I guess a better, more newbie friendly term for it would be. What's a newbie? Newbie meaning a new player to the game. I thought it meant new body. Okay, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> uh, is <laughs> just be... Don't take the game back... Or don't take the anger and the stress and the frustration from the game back into your real life. And like... Just don't be angry about it afterwards. Leave it in the game. Thank you. That that, that was a good enough explanation for Tilt. Yeah. I think uh, the biggest advice that I can give to somebody is make sure that both individuals are having some sort of fun. Make sure that you uh, communicate, as Jake said. And the very last thing is don't undersell yourself. If you want to lower your potential ceiling, say that you're bad. If you want to lower your potential ceiling, say that you're going to lose because you're new. Say that your cards are worse. Say that you're not as good. If you start saying those things, it is a self-fulfilling pr- prophecy. Mm-hmm. If soon as, as soon as that happens, you just lower your human potential. Mm-hmm. Not all of us can be Tim Keith's and, and play at a naturally higher level. But if you're two weeks into the game, if you're two years into the game, and you're, all, and you're, you're constantly saying that this is, this is not going to go well for me. I mean, I'm, like, I'm like living proof for that. I got third at the first PDCA. I started the Wednesday before it. Yeah. And it was confidence. Mm-hmm. And Scorch Wheel. So I, I was <laughs> oh, running sorry. that card. Tango Dive. Sorry. No one told me about that card. Otherwise, I maybe would have won. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I would love to hear your guys' mental strategies. Um, YouTube comments, Facebook comments. Share this in your local playgroups. I think this is one of the... the yeah. Thank you, Ryan Fam, for giving me the inspiration to talk about this. And this is something I really want to talk about more on the, on the podcast is like, where is your mental health? What are you doing in order to make yourself better at the card game mentally? Yeah. And this isn't even just a UFS thing. This is like an every game thing, an everyday life thing. Yeah. Which is why these motivational videos are like help push this topic over the edge. Yep. Um, we never got to this. So <laughs> we will, uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to topic three because this one's running a little long. Okay. Well, I'm sure we will revisit this in the future. Um, yeah. I'm almost certain. Topic three.